So I decided to make a video that uh, goes over one of the main ways that I patch, um, and that would be using an analog shift register to send simple sequences to multiple voices, and then interacting those voices using different envelope shapes. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to clock uh, using our master clock, which in this case is going to be a woggle bug. And the woggle bug is going to send its master clock to the tempi, which will act as a clock divider and multiplier. So after two clock pulses on the woggle bug, the tempi will then sync up, and it's now synced. So we now have voltage control over the speed of our clocks, which in this case we have six. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to send that clock in this case, the first channel of Tempe, to our CV bus. Uh, I know you can't really see this case too well, but it's in uh, one way or another my own make noise shared system, uh, minus a few modules and uh, adding a few modules that aren't normally in the shared system. Up here we have two separate maths modules. Uh, yes, you do need two maths modules. Uh, and then we've got the uh, DPO, STO, um, the Telharmonic, the Mysteron, uh, Wogglebug, Tempe, Rene, version 1, uh, Brains, Pressure Points, a Mod to Mix, an LXD, and two separate Optimixes. So now that we've multiplied, or not, I shouldn't say multiply, but we've, we've um, molted our clock to the CV bus, We've got one, two, three, four copies of channel one of Tempe, which in this case is going to act as our master clock. So once we have our master clock set, what we need to do now is actually get our voices going. Uh, the voices should be in tune uh, to save time on the video. I did my best to get them in tune first. Uh, so we're going to send a sine wave from the second half of the DPO to the first channel of this Optimix. We're then going to send a sine wave from the other side of the DPO to the second channel of this Optimix. And then we're going to use a third sine wave from the STO, or sub tambral oscillator, one of my favorite modules. Uh, and it's kind of just half of the DPO. And we're going to send that to a, another channel on an Optimix. We need to chain these Optimixes together. And we're going to utilize uh, the auxiliary port. So what we're going to do is take the auxiliary output of this Optimix, I'm sorry, the sum output, the auxiliary is an input, uh, out, set the sum of these two channels, and send it to the auxiliary of this secondary Optimix. This now has given us a four-channel Optimix. We will then take the sum output of the second Optimix and send that to our audio output. And if the voices are still in tune, we should have three sine waves in unison. This is the this side of the DPO. That's that side of the DPO. enough for the video's purpose. Let's close these down. What we're going to do now is we are going to send our voltages from our sequencer, in this case it is going to be Rene, uh, to our analog shift register. And in this case our analog shift register is going to be copier machine mode in the ornament in crime. If you do not know anything about the ornament in crime, I suggest you look it up. It's a fantastic module. I had to get two of them because I love it so much. Just like mass, I had to get two of them. Um, so, in this demonstration, we are just going to be using one. So, we're going to clock 
our ornament and crime with our master clock. And then we're going to clock our sequencer. All right, Renee is now happily stepping along through four steps. I move my hand. Hopefully you can see that in the video. We got four steps going along as that orange light along the bottom of Renee. Like I said, this video is going to use simple sequences, so it is just going to be four notes that we're using this whole time, and then using transposition and other tricks, we'll get a lot of other variants uh, and iterations out of these four notes. So we're going to send the output from Renee to the input of the ornament and crime. We're then going to take the outputs of the ornament and crime, or in this case, I'll refer to as the shift register, which if you don't know what a shift register is, I will make another video to go over it. Please look it up on your own if you don't know exactly what it is, but it's essentially going to delay my CV uh, by a set amount of clock pulses and allow me to cascade these four notes across these several voices uh, similar to the way that you would sing rounds, like row, row, row your boat. One person starts singing and after a certain amount of uh, uh, pulses, the next person starts singing the same exact lines. Very similar in the way that I'm going to be using this. So we're going to send output A to the one volt proctive on the DPO. Right hand side, we're going to send output B to the DPO's one volt proctive uh, left hand side. And we're going to send output C to the STO's one volt proctive. So now we have four notes. Um, these uh, are then going to be sent to the shift register and then cascaded in a delayed uh, fashion to these voices. So let's bring up the first voice and uh, let's just hear what we have with these, these four notes here. Okay. So I did set up this little four note sequence just once again to save time for the video. Um, when I perform live, I like to set them all to zero and build the sequence right there on, on the spot. But in this case, I've just got this simple four note sequence going to a sine wave. Pretty beautiful. Uh, it's got a little bit of reverb maybe.
child attend me to trigger a secondary mass envelope. And then the reason I have two mass, let's go ahead and trigger a third mass envelope. Alright, so we're going to send these envelopes, which all right now have uh, an exponential shape, uh, no attack and no decay, just little blips. Thank you. 
Merci.